Well, welcome to Colchiff, the start of my video montage. We've got to start here really. This is Tate's Afton Avenue, where I lived from 1961 till 1980. <coughs> That's the original house. My bedroom when I was small was up there, although Chris thinks I lived in a shoebox somewhere. But I think that was my room when I was little. And over here we have the garage. That was irrigated ivy that my mother planted about 20 years ago. And as we swing around this way, we can see the new extent, the new house that was built on the plot of land at the side. Just before mother, no, after mother had left actually, but this got sold when the house was sold. Next door was the Dodds when I was small and later than that the Chilterns. <coughs> what we've got here, this is Hobby Lane School, which was the first school I went to. This little bit over here is new but the rest of it looks like the original building. One thing that's missing is over here we had the only toilets in the school which were outside which was quite Unusual, even for those times. So, up there in line. This is uh, 13 Glebe, where my friend Andrew Robinson lived. A lot of time here in my early days. And here's New Church Primary School, where I lived... Uh, sorry, I went from... Uh, age of about 6 to 11. Got to film through the gates because they got all this security to stop the perverts getting in. This bit over here is new since I was there. But that bit over there is the original building. Just like it was in my day. Okay, here we are. This is Culture High School. The building closest to us here is A Block, which is where I spent about four years. Mm. Over there is... I forgot what those blocks were called. They were quite new when I was a lad, but they're, uh, they've seen better days now. And then this one over here is a new building. It's fairly recent. And they're actually over the other side building quite a lot of extra buildings. I'll not bother filming them because they're not to do with me. Okay, this is the back of the old uh, drama hall. And over there in the distance, well, just through those trees is the old sports hall. So if we strung around this way, you'll find that I'm lying and I'm going to show you the new buildings. Because this is a little bit sad because just right in front of us here, and over there behind the green fence was the uh, school sports field when I was a lad, which is where I made many star appearances as the captain of the, uh, was a captain or vice captain of the cricket team, I can't remember. And an odd guest appearance for the football team when they were desperate. But now, it's all been built over. I no doubt one of Robert's little projects. Okay, what we're looking at here is e, what used to be called E-Block, it's now called Chadwick House. And it's one of the original UK AEA buildings that was built just after the war. It's only been slightly refurbished, but it's basically the old building. And my dad worked in here for quite a lot of years, in his, in his early years at Risley. And funnily enough, this is where I was interviewed in 1985 when I applied for a job with the UK AEA and by accident ended up at Windscale. And funnily enough, the company I work for now, Nuvia, has some offices in this building. That's where I've been working this last couple of days. 
Now the funny thing is, apart from this building, the rest of the Risley site is, would be almost unrecognisable to my dad. There's very few of the buildings from his, his days still left. We'll just do a quick panorama. And this is sort of fairly typical what we see over here. There's a lot of modern office buildings. Uh, not entirely occupied by the nuclear industry, but there are a lot of nuclear workers still on this site, probably actually more than there ever was. And over there, over here we have the canteen, which I think has been there for quite a while, but not, not, not the same vintage as E Block. We used to have little uh, Christmas parties in there when I was small as well. Those were the days. So this is the other side of E Block. You can, this is cut the original brickwork in, so you can see what it would have looked like in my, uh, when my dad was here. Hmm. I'm on a mission to find the ditch, which used to be at the back of the British Legion car park. I'm just panning around now, just to prove that this, I'm here at the back of the British Legion. Over there is the back of Two Sefton, but you can't actually see it properly. I have had a scout round to see if there's a better view and there isn't really, so anyway. What I was wanting to do was show some footage of the ditch, but there's something very strange happened, because over the back of here, where the ditch used to be, is some houses. And I know it wasn't exactly the Amazon in full flood, but the ditch isn't there anymore. I've tried to get it the other way as well, through the little uh, alleyway down Sefton Avenue, and you can't get to it that way either, so the ditch is gone. I'm, I'm really breaking up here, I mean, what can you say? I spent hours there when I was small and it's not there anymore. So, just have to move on. Okay, in this section of the uh documentary we're going to look at one or two drinking establishments and where else to start but the Dayton of course it always was the Dayton but it's not anymore it's called Culture Sports Club now it used to be uh, sort of affiliated with the Atomic Energy Authority but now it's just a general sports club I used to drink here a lot sort of early late teens early 20s uh, mainly because the drink was cheap and this was all our only mates game. Uh, so we'd be in here nearly every night, drinking, snooker, three card brag, snooker, drinking, and then every now and again we'd play some outdoor games such as over here is the bowling green, an old man's game that we used to play. Now then, New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, everybody you'd ever known in your life was in here. And when I was about 22, I got banned for a, a minor offence. And that was the beginning of the end of the place. Me and my mates went to the Harrow and uh, after that it was never the same again. Well, the place is deserted now, if you went in it would be nearly deserted. So there you go. What we have now, this is the Harrow Inn. Uh, it's probably my number two drinking place. Sort of in association with the Dayton and banning, getting banned from the Dayton. This is where I used to go most of the time there after where all the bright young things were at the time and, and me. Uh, I went in the other night for a drink and I was the only person in the place. Amazing. I thought I'd go in and see all my old mates, and there was no soul in the place. This time it's the Cherry Tree. This is the pub that was closest to uh, Sefton Avenue. It wasn't the particularly frequent place where I went for a drink, but latterly we used to go here for meals with, uh, with Mother occasionally and other people. And I was actually in there uh, last night having a meal, and it's 
it's not bad, it's okay. It was actually full up at six o'clock on a Tuesday night. And we just got a table. Formerly the bricklayer's arms. And we'll just pan over here now to water fields, which is still here. I can't remember the way the way it went now, but at one point when I was a young lad, my mother used to get nice pies from Waterfields for herself and cakes and cheap ones for the rest of us from Moody's or it might have been the other way around but there you go, Waterfields still there this is what used to be the new inn but it's latterly been converted into a uh, Thai restaurant and I was in here a couple of weeks ago actually it's okay not uh, brilliant it's just you know it's acceptable it's okay I never really came in here for a drink although funnily enough I did know two of the children of the landlord at the time I used to play brag with uh, Ian Lowe and uh, uh, Debbie Lowe was a, a friend of mine at one point and there you go, I think John was reasonably regular in here at one point, but uh, not, not, not when I was knocking about in Colchiff. That's it, the new inn. Okay, today here we are at Colchiff Church, new church. A uh, bit of an unusual view, I'm actually around the back of the church, because believe it or not, it's just nearly half past six and there's an incredibly large crowd loitering outside the pack horse of smokers they would wonder what I was doing if I was filming at the front so here we are with an unusual view from the back not particularly impressive this facade uh, well then what went on here at this church uh, I was in the choir here Martin was in the choir here. Chris and Harry were married here. And we're going to go and have a look now at Mother and Father's uh, stone where their ashes are buried. So off we walk. Around the corner. Here is the little garden where the various ashes are buried. And the two names we recognise on there. But what we've really come to see. Edwin White, my dad, and Ada, and my mum. Somewhere under this ground is their ashes. And would you believe it, they've all gone now, so here is the front of the church. Which looks a lot nicer. Here we are, <coughs> outside the pack horse. Not somewhere that I went in very often, it was always a bit of an old man's place when I was around. But it's, apparently this restaurant is okay, so we might try that sometime. Where's the old front? And there's the, old, the smoker's quarters, and that old boy on the left there has been sat there, stood there for at least 20 minutes. Doesn't move at all apart from putting a cigarette in his mouth. Or is it? Oh, it's a pipe. It's a pipe. Crikey. And there in the distance is the church. This is a little bit of a funny one. I'm on an underpass underneath the uh, A574 at Birchwood. 
and you can just about make out up there the words Josh White. I wrote that in 1976. Not something I'm especially proud of, but rather strange that it's still here 33 years later. So I've not a lot of people know this because universally known as Josh White at school for some reason which I never did find out why. So there you are, me being a a yobbo when I was 14. Here we are at Culture. There's playing field. Can't really say much, too many people wondering what, the, what I'm doing. Over there in the distance, too Couldn't really say too much out there, there was too many people lurking, but here we are at Culture of Swings. I used to spend a lot of time down here when I was small. And then even sort of latterly just before my mother left to go to Grimsby, uh, we used to come down here quite a lot with Sarah when she was small, about three or four. So obviously not got as much good stuff on as it had when I was going but that's, uh, there you go and this shot is from the sort of the back side of the uh, what used to be the CPS it's now what was the main CPS shop now Sainsbury's but looks pretty much the same inside and then up there is all the little shops uh, my mum used to wander around quite a lot and they do a bit of indoor footage up there sometime if we get a chance. So there you go, Mr Nelson has sold his soul to Sainsbury's. And funnily enough we've got an epilogue, I was just I was about to get back in the car. The thing here, there's a funny thing, by Keith Lyon. Got some vague memory that Chris used to know someone of, of that name. Don't know if it's the same geezer or not, but there you go. That's on a building adjacent to the CPS, which looks like a new building. What is it? Astra Seal. What's Astra Seal? I don't know. Oh. Here we are on the other side of the CPS. That's the news agents in there. There's the way up to the little shop. Is it? Oh, yeah. There's the fish in the corner there. My mum used to go to the laundrette there for lucky years. Around that way. Duke and Solicitor. I've been there for years, ever since I was here. And then, panning round, another view of the park from this side. Oops. Now here's a funny thing, I'm actually near Risley uh, Remand Centre as well. But the feature here is this pond covered in some green slime, under which lurks the monster. Now I think you only get these near Culture because there's one on Hobby Lane that looks like this, or I used to. And what happens when the creature from the lagoon emerges? I'm sorry folks, I know we've been here before, but I just thought it was uh, look a bit different, the lighting's a bit different now, the sun's setting, the fountain's flowing. Just thought it looked a bit different, that's all.